Hello everybody, welcome back once again. I have got yet another Octopath Traveler 2 character guide for you. This time we're talking Agnea. Or Agnea. Agnea? Agnea. I think it's Agnea. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Agnea's alright. Uh, not one of my favorite characters in the game, but she's pretty solid though still. So anyways, uh, let's talk her path action. So during the day she can allure. Um, you know, useful for just getting, you know, townspeople around, uh, if you're, if you're trying to do, you know, quests and stuff, right, where you need to lead one town person to another. Um, she also does have some kind of interesting characters that she can, uh, allure. I come to think of it would be, like, Lamani is, is one of the, one of the ones that I kind of think about a lot. Um, because he is able to, when you use, uh, or when you summon him, oh, I'm sorry, when you buff, um, while you have him as... Uh, or while you have him allured, uh, he'll also give that person an elemental attack buff. Um, there's plenty of really good buffs like that in the game, right? Or uh, plenty of good NPCs that can do effects like that. Uh, Dulcinea, though, is also insane. Same with Veronica. Um, basically, anytime you have uh, her with you and you use a buff, uh, Dulcinea will also add a buff that uh, makes it so that that character can avoid one physical attack. It's crazy. It's like a sidestep, right? So... Um, she can do some pretty cool stuff uh, with that. So um, don't do what I do and and avoid using uh, somebody or not have her somebody allured uh, the entire time. Oftentimes I would do boss battles and stuff with nobody even allured. And so anytime I'm buffing, you know, I'm not getting as much as I could out of that. Uh, the other kind of thing is that, you know, she's got a... Uh, some of those characters can also, like, restore SP to whoever you're buffing with, with an NPC. So again... A lot of different really cool, um, you know, combos with with her and, and that allure ability. Uh, next up is her path action in Treat. So basically at night she can get, um, you know, items from people. Uh, it seems to me that you can get more items with her than almost anybody else. Um, what, I, what I mean though is like, like kids, um, <clears throat> you can't mug children. Um, so... <laughs> So the better way to get items from them is to use Entreat, I guess is kind of what I'm trying to say, right? So um, Entreat, though, is based off of her character level, so if you neglect her, you will not be able to get items from uh, some of the, the characters in the game, so do not neglect her. Uh, next up is uh, Dance Session. I've actually already been over this. Uh, it, it's, again, characters like Lamani, uh, and then whenever you buff using, again, like Peacock Strut, or, well, that's not a very good one, right? because that would be redundant, but, like, if you use a Lionheart dance on somebody, uh, Lamani will will perform a, an ability that uh, also buffs that character with an elemental attack buff. Or, again, Dulcinea, which is probably one of the best characters in the game to have allured, um, because she will, uh, again, add that uh, uh, physical... Uh, uh, or the ability to uh, evade one physical attack. Just phenomenal. Uh, and then her latent power is all together now. Spread the effects of a single, uh, spread the effects of single target skills to all. This does not affect divine skills or skills that only affect the user. Um, so all together now will not uh, work on things like sidestep. It will not work on things like rest. You need a seal of diffusion for that. Take a look at my Partitio video for that if you want to know a little bit more. But um, all together now will work when you want to buff things like. Uh, peacock strut to everybody, right? If you want everybody to do a bunch of magical damage, you hit all together now, then hit uh, peacock strut, and boom, that will spread to all uh, characters. Same with lion dance. If you want to have everybody buffed up with a physical attack, uh, use the all together now, and then um, and, and then do that. Um, it's actually very similar to Seal Tej's seduction, except. Um, you know, all together now isn't like targetable, right? Like you can't give that to somebody else. It's only for Agnea. Um, but it's it's pretty good. Um, but again, very similar uh, to uh, her uh, Seal Tej seduction. Um, let's take a look at her skills. Um, so Lion Dance, again, already been over this. Uh, very good ability. Raise the physical attack of a single uh, ally for two turns. Um, you know, very good if you want to do, uh, you know, all together now. Uh, and give that to everybody. Uh, Ruinous Kick, never really use this. Unleash a powerful physical attack on a single foe, reduce your shield points, regardless of their weak points. It is nice. Uh, the fact that uh, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, her not having a bow or something, right? If you want to try to 
try to break shields, you just use Ruinous Kick. Um, so uh, there is a, at least a, it's got or she's got that going for her. Uh, Peacock's Threat, again, another solid buff. Raise the elemental attack of a single ally for two turns. Very, very good stuff. Uh, and use that with, you know, all together now. If, again, if you want to uh, extend that to everybody. Uh, Sweeping Gale, uh, better for uh, boss battles, right? Uh, but, I don't know, a single target uh, wind attack. Wind is wind is tough to come by, so I'll at least give her that. Uh, it's a tough element to, to cover. Um, and so, you know, I, again, th but this, this version is better for, like, boss battles where you're only trying to hit one, you know, enemy, right? Um, whereas... Her windy refrain is what you're going to want to use uh, more often than not to hit all foes. Um, next up, uh, stimulate. Move a single ally's action, uh, or next action, up one spot. Never used this. Um, literally never. I don't think I ever used this at all. Um, so not, not a good ability in my opinion. Pointless. Uh, dagger dance. Unleash a dagger attack on all foes. That's kind of cool. Uh, you know... Um, you know, multi-target attacks are always good, and uh, being able to do that with a dagger, solid. Solid ability. Um, Bewildering Grace, cause a curious effect to occur one time. I messed around with this, and I gotta say, this is not, it's not really worthwhile. Um, one of the effects from Bewildering Grace is like an EXP times 100 buff, allegedly. Um, well, I say allegedly. I have actually seen uh, videos of that happening, um, but... Uh, it's extremely, extremely rare and not, in my opinion, not really worth doing. More often than not, you're going to nuke yourself and kill yourself or, like, remove all of your BP. Um, it's just not a very good uh, ability because there's so many different effects uh, that can happen, and a lot of those effects are bad. <laughs> so <clears throat> I do not recommend uh, using that. Uh, Seal Tejan Seduction. Extend the reach of a single ally's skills for, or to all for three turns. This does not affect divine skills or skills that only affect the user. So, uh, Seal Teacher Seduction is amazing. This skill is so good. Um, you can take a look at my uh, my Hikari video, um, but in, in kind of you know, I guess I described uh, uh, really well on 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 how the the multiple uses of this skill. But basically, it, it allows uh, you to target her. Uh, it, it's a lot like her all together now, right? Where um, it makes uh, those those uh, effects hit everything, but um, Seal Teacher Seduction is really really good for things like uh, Hikari using Limb from Limb because it changes Limb from Limb from a single target attack to hitting all uh, enemies, um, and I just think that that's a, a really solid ability. Um, and you can cast this on on other people like Oswald uh, when you use um, although it's not that great of a combo with Oswald because he already has Teach, but um, you can use Stroke of Genius uh, and uh, and extend that to, you know, everybody. So, um, again, very, very good skill. It has a lot of really good combos, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's yeah, it's just solid. Uh, use, use and abuse that. Uh, windy Refrain, already touched on this, but um, it's really good because it's a multi-target wind attack, so very good for taking out uh, random encounters, but also... Uh, it has the added effect of causing your allies to act first on the next turn. This is very, very good, uh, especially for things like Kates and Octopuffs. Um, combine this with uh, a step ahead, and um, not only will all of your characters get their initial uh, attacks first, um, but also if you use Windy Refrain, then on the second uh, turn, uh, all of your characters will act uh, first again. So... Um, but also, I mean, not, not just that, but it's just a solid overall uh, ability. Um, so very, very, very good. Uh, and that's actually uh, acquired from uh, her shrine, which is really nice uh, that you don't have to wait for this until, like, you've beat her uh, final chapter. Uh, whereas the Song of Hope is uh, obtained after, uh, you know, getting her, or completing her final chapter. It says, extend the duration of a single ally's positive effects by one turn. This does not affect divine skills. Um, never really used this, honestly. Uh, it can be good, I guess, but uh, I just didn't really find it that useful. Um, you know, you can extend the duration of, you know, I don't know, like um, Lion Dance or whatever, right? To 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 like more more turn for more turns. Um, also, you could pair this up with her latent power uh, to extend the duration of all allies' positive effects. Um, so at least that's nice, right? She can keep buffs up, and that's kind of her deal anyway. Agnea is the the premier buffer of the game, I would say. 
uh, and, um, and and I think that's the, the best way to use her is really just a buffer. Um, go uh, and, and along with that theme, uh, the show goes on as a solid, uh, solid ability. Um, I don't use the show goes on unless I'm in a boss battle. And even then it's pretty uh, hit and miss whether or not I'll actually put this on. But it does say extends the duration of augmenting effects granted by the equipping character by one turn. Um, so it's just going to make like a lion dance last for one turn longer. So again, good stuff. Um, ever evasive, never use this. Uh, enables the equipping character to more easily evade enemy attack. Literally never use this. I didn't equip this on a single character ever. Uh, hard worker, receive additional JP after battles. Good uh, early on in the game when you're hurting for JP. Um, you know, combine this with like uh, life in the shadows and uh, extra experience. Uh, and you will, you know, quickly uh, have enough JP and, you know, experience and all that. Um, but yeah, very, very good early on in the game. Um, but but eventually you'll get to a point where you don't really need this anymore and you'll want to swap that out for something else. Uh, invigorate and Inspire slightly fills the target's latent power gauge when the equipping character grants them an augmenting effect. A, a good ability, especially for her. Um, I mean, really anybody that's going to be buffing other characters, this is pretty solid for, but... Um, I never really found it that useful, and I, I think I would rather have uh, other um, status, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, skills, uh, support skills on her. Um, as far as her, uh, you know, support skills, it's almost standard across the board here, and this, uh, I'll probably sound like a bit of a broken record here, but Vigorous Victor, Step Ahead, these are always solid, same with Boost Start. I mean, really these three, you, you'll probably want to have these, especially for random encounters, you can swap out Vigorous Victor for other things, especially like boss battles. You'll want to do um, something else. Probably like the show goes on for boss battles, right? Uh, and then I do have Life in the Shadows. Again, this is another uh, of those abilities that you can swap out depending on, you know, does somebody else already have this? Okay, well, no reason to use that on her as well. Uh, you could use Hard Worker instead, right? Um, or Grows on Trees, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much how I set up. Uh, she doesn't really need uh, the... Uh, the deal more damage ability from the warrior because I never really use her to deal that much damage anyway. So, um, so that is that. Uh, as far as uh, her equipment goes, and actually, let's let's actually talk uh, combos really quickly. I really liked her as merchant. Um, the reason for that is um, is because of hired help. So she can, uh, you know, use. I mean, honestly, her BP is better used for other things. But you can break shields with her using hired help. Um, you know, the ability to break, you know, up to four uh, shields with a sword attack. You know, she's not going to do much damage with this, but it's more about breaking. Um, you know, sidestep kind of can be nice, right? She can avoid some physical attacks. I would still rather do other things with her. But uh, I do donate BP with her a bit as well. Um, and so that works out, you know, pretty well with her role as kind of a buffer, right? Is giving people BP as well. Um, the rest of the stuff isn't that interesting, but um, honestly, the the bigger reason here that I like to use her for, uh, or as a merchant, is actually because of the, her gear choices. Uh, so she can use the Tornado Glaive then, uh, which says raises the potency of wind-based attacks. Same with the Moon Eater, uh, raises the potency of fire and wind-based attacks. Now, um, you're going to get almost all of your elemental, well, you're going to get your elemental attack basically from the Moon Eater. It has 349, which is really solid for a dagger. Um, the only thing that's going to beat this out is, you know, there's a couple of stabs in the game that could beat this, but um, that's where you're going to get all of your elemental attack from. Uh, and then the Tornado Bow, same thing, raises potency of wind-based attack. So she's got three different abilities that are increasing her wind damage, uh, so she's going to be able to deal a pretty decent amount of damage with her uh, Windy Refrain ability. Um, the rest of this stuff doesn't matter as much, um, although I did like the Ancient Circlet and the Blessed Vestments, just to give her a little bit more... Uh, elemental attack here. You can see with this uh, specific, and I have a Layla's Elm amulet giving her 100 elemental attack as well as the elemental augmenter as well. Um, with the Moon Eater, she's get she's hitting or at, she's hitting 969 elemental attack right now at level 72. Um, so she's I mean she's very high level, but um, with that that specific gear setup, she's going to be doing some pretty uh, respectable damage with those wind spells. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, another pretty solid uh, class for her, though, is the Conjurer. Uh, and mostly, again, for the same thing. Uh, she's, you know, she's already basically a buffer, and so why not add more buffs to that, right? So, 
Um, that's probably, um, and honestly, probably for boss battles, the Conjurer is better, um, better than Merchant, right? Um, unless you really need to get that extra, you know, uh, shield breaking effect from, you know, like the Merchant class. But I have doubts on that. But anyways, um, for for you know, uh, boss encounters. And the other great thing is, uh, you know, like um, uh, the show must go on. Will extend all the buffs of your your conjure abilities as well. So, um, very very uh, good uh, combination uh, for her as well. But um, that is about it, I think. I did the yep. I did skills. I did support skills. Yeah, I think, and I did equipment. Yeah, so I think we're all done. Um, so as always, I hope the guide was helpful, and thank you for watching.